Hey everybody, this is David Good. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to demonstrate how I painted this 30 by 48 inch piece called Golden Hour. And I'm going to use matte medium as my main medium today. It's going to be used to prepare the canvas, to thin my paints, and to be used as uh, aid for blending my colors. So let's get started. So here I'm taking a flat brush loaded with matte medium and applying it to the canvas. This is where I'm going to be initially working and that's really all you need to do is just go where you're going to work. I've got a round brush here that I used to pick up my color and also mixed it with some matte medium to help me spread the paint better. Now when I'm blending I'm coming back with the flat brush and only matte medium and I'm just moving color around. It works really nicely. Uh, you can you can go back for some matte medium and go over an area where you've already blended and, and blend it out some more if it gets a little too dry. So most of this right here is just blending. And here I'll use two paint brushes. I got one with paint, one with the matte medium, and apply a little dollop here and there and blend it in and get the effect I want. But in this stage, it's mostly blending apply large areas of, of paint but then blend it in. And I do have an idea what I want this to look like so unlike when I do my abstracts yeah I've got a battle plan. So I just keep layering on the colors. Now I'll use the round brush and start applying the, the base for some trees. This is in no great detail, it's just kind of getting a footprint up there. And I blend in behind it each time. Kind of softens the color until I really want the detail to show through. I'm just going for my values here and keeping it somewhat lighter in the back and darker in the front. working in layers. I can't stress how important it is to to remember that you work in layers. Paint something just enough to get it going, stand back, come back over it with something else. Just keep layering it because if you look at nature it's nothing but layers. And here I'm using just a wet brush, um, number 10 flat brush wet brush and I'm basically moving paint. I'm kind of erasing it in one area and applying it someplace else. You know, when, when I go through a dark area um, and go up to a light area, it's transferring paint. And this is a really quick, easy way of adding some tree trunks. So you do it while the paint's wet, you get it wet with water, dab it off, and then go apply it. And now I'm going back with my round brush and applying some more foliage to kind of give the the trees their roundness now their their depth the primary colors I'm using today are uh, burnt umber uh, oxide red for my highlights I'm going to throw in a little yellow um, to these colors to get some green going for for other highlights in my foliage um, and then of course I'm going to have a sun here and I want a really bold sun so it's going to be yellow. But basically it's like three colors. Oh and I do use black to really darken things up. So four colors. Never said I was good at math. And right now I just go back and forth between different areas and work a little more putting on trees, putting on foreground, putting on, you know, the land at the end of the water there. I'm not working off of a reference photo at all on this one. Um, this is purely in my mind's eye. And I've seen paintings similar in, in mood and coloring, you know, done by some of the greats throughout history. And I just wanted to try to recreate that. And so I knew it's going to be dark. It was going to be a lot of browns and, and reds. And um, 
kind of just seeing where this journey takes me. Okay, here I am using a smaller fan brush to add some uh, foliage detail in the distance there. But this painting, again, has is, is primarily been painted with that one large round brush as far as applying paint. Nice effect. But I will use some smaller, you know, standard size brushes in order to get some detail here and there. So I had put some paint up in the uh, sky there, transferred a little bit, and it got a little dark, so I just got a little more medium on there and spread it out. Here I go adding a bit of a yellow tint to get the glow in the sky. The sky's got kind of a, a foggy look to it, so light can disperse throughout a large area. And give, you an, give you an atmosphere. Get a little yellow down in there, and here I'm taking a, a brush and putting in a a well-defined sun and I'll blend a little bit around so it glows in the sky and then I'll remember to carry that highlight through down to the water gotta have a reflection of some sort helps with your depth So one brush has paint, the other brush has matte medium, and I blend. Okay, now back to the round brush with matte medium and paint, adding more foliage detail. Kind of framing in the picture here on either side with some, some big trees. I want to take your eye and and guide it into the painting so I put a border around each side and something to look at at different levels and I'll take your eyes into the painting and you can see everything that way I'm using a little bit of red oxide down here to add some some base highlights on the ground in front of us that ground's going to go through a couple of incarnations. You'll, you'll see me add some grays, some greens, some more red. Blah, 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 blah. It's a lot of fun. Like I say, work in layers. Because nature is nothing but layers. You know, you don't see everything at the first level. So you just keep painting in layers. Developing that natural leveling. And go from there. Basically the method I'm using is just a tapping method. I tap and then I blend lightly. Um, kind of hard to see when I've got sped up so much. But uh, you know, I didn't want to have you here for two hours. So I thought I'd spare you that. So I sped up the film as we do a lot here. Uh, when I'm doing the, the dark land color, yes, I'm doing brush strokes and creating a, a dark color. But then down here, when I want foliage or whatnot, it's tapping. Painting's pretty much the same no matter what size brush you use. Here I'm using a really long liner brush and I'm adding some sticks, twigs and stuff like that at different areas. Small details like this really bring a painting to life, so don't forget them. I mean, if you're ever stuck for wondering why a painting doesn't have that, that level of realism, look at the painting and then look at a picture that you take maybe or something you find in the magazine and just look at every little detail that is in those paintings. For those pictures and emulate it you can't never put too much in a painting you can overwork a painting but you can't put too much detail into a painting 
Here I'm going down and adding some highlights to the trees still. And here comes the yellow colors, yellow green. Really adding some elevation to these uh, this landfill in the front. And pretty much with that is done. Put your signature on it. You're good to go. And through the uh, miracle of video editing and high-speed photography, we've just taken a two-hour process down to about ten minutes. Hope you've enjoyed this. It's a really neat effect. I got what I wanted out of it. Um, it certainly isn't a realistic painting because some of my detail is off and weird, but uh, it's definitely got the mood I wanted. Give this one a try. Stay messy, guys. See you next time.